Hey guys, so it turns out I have predicted the outcome of the Chess Olympiad correctly. Both the Open and the women's Indian teams have won, dominating the field. And this means that the new era in chess has begun. Let me tell you why and let me tell you my thoughts on uh, the results of the Olympiad. So first of all, it's been a fascinating 11-day um, event. I've been watching closely all rounds and there were many many important uh, chess games for development of chess knowledge. Let's take the end game of Gukesh versus Wei Yi, where Gukesh outmaneuvered his uh, very skilled opponent. Wei Yi is one of the best players in the world, currently top seven or top eight in the world. So this was an end game that will be studied in the chess books in the years to come. It was very important chess-wise, but uh, if we speak about the current trend in, in uh, the world chess, how chess is developing, who will dominate the chess in the upcoming years, uh, this Olympiad is very important to understand this. So first of all, yeah, you should ch check out my video, i link it in the description, where I recorded a forecast about the Olympiad and I said that it's very likely that both Indian teams will win. Which they, did, which, which they did. It was not hard to predict because it was obvious that India is on the rise and uh, individual results speak for themselves. If you look at the individual results, for example, of Gukesh and Arjun Regaisi, they are staggering. Gukesh has gained 30 rating points. He was already like top 10 in the world and now he is top 5 in the world, which is uh, very impressive to grow 30 rating points at this level people can't do it like in many years. They keep hovering around 2750, which is somewhere around the level Gukesh was at uh, for years. And most uh, do not even manage to break this barrier, even top gems, super gems. And he did it effortlessly. He scored nine out of 10 points and his rating performance was uh, more than 3050. I will ask the team to add here the picture of uh, you can see it on the screen now, the picture of uh, best tournament performances in classical chess in uh, chess history. Number one is the legendary performance by Fabiano Caruana in 2014 in the Sink World Cup, where he scored around 3100 uh, rating performance. And, but Gukesh is a close second now, all time second. This is crazy. For those of you who don't know what this means, this means the level at which you were playing during a tournament. So, for example, if you had opponents uh, that uh, have an average rating of 2700 and you scored 50% against them, your rating performance is around 2700. So, G Gukesh's rating performance is over 3000, which means that his, his level is somewhere in between Magnus Carlsen and like a chess engine, maybe not the strongest one, not Stockfish 17, but maybe St Stockfish, I don't know, 14. So he's somewhere in between. This is crazy. This is, um, I, I, I'm just lost for words here. And Arjun guys, he has the 11th, uh, you can see on the, on this picture, the exact same picture. Arjun Regaisi has scored the 11th uh, highest rating performance ever, also with not a less impressive score of 10 out of 11. These guys, they demolished the field. And Arjun's rating performance is a little bit lower because he played a little bit lower rated opponents, but still, he's a beast. And he has gained uh, 19 rating points and he has surpassed Fabiano Caruana. Fabiano Caruana is now number four in the world. And Arjun is number three. So check out my podcast with Arjun, by the way. Uh, when we recorded with Arjun that podcast, he was number four in the world. But I was sure that he was, he's going to, to climb high and higher in, in the world uh, rankings. But I didn't expect it to happen so fast. And Fabi, I don't remember uh, last time he was below, uh, he was out of top three. Maybe when he had some bad performances uh, after the pandemics. Uh, that was the time, but he uh, he bounced back, and uh, it seems like uh, over the last 10 years, Fabi kept uh, being in top three. Uh, usually he was number two in the world, behind only Magnus Carlsen. Recently they have uh, fluctuated with uh, Hikaru, but still, this is uh, unexpected. And this is not because Fabi has uh, become weaker. Fabi has had a nice event, a good event, but uh, he lost this uh, game to Gukesh, which, which uh, was the factor... <laughs> for him uh, uh, of losing 
rating points. So Fabi, Fabi is still incredibly strong, but uh, Arjun has surpassed him and Gukesh has almost uh, uh, caught up to him in the rankings and probably there is a high, high chance that that they both will score, will um, will raise uh, their late ratings to 2800 plus rate uh, level uh, quite soon. I mean, both Arjun and Gukesh. Phenomenal, phenomenal performance by both of them. And Vidit also scored uh, very, very important wins um, in this tournament. And uh, of course, Prague was very solid, losing just one game. Can you imagine the Indian chess team in the open section didn't lose a single match and they lost just one individual game in 11 rounds, four boards, 44 games. In 44 games, they lost just one. Prague lost to Wesley So. Wesley So is top 10 in the world and an incredible player. So there's nothing to be ashamed of in losing to him. So this is this is like uh, unspoken of level of dominance, of domination. And uh, in the open section, there was uh, more of a fight. Uh, at some point, Kazakhstan was number one, uh, I think, uh, before the penultimate round. Um, by the way, as you may know, I live in Kazakhstan, in Almaty, and um, Ksenia Balabaeva, one of the members of the Kazakhstani women's team um, in the Olympiad, uh, she played with me in, on the same team uh, in the World Rapid and Blitz Teams event in August in Astana, Kazakhstan, where I've interviewed some of the chess players. You might have seen some podcasts on this channel. Arjun, Jordan, Van Forest, Dubov is coming next. Grishuk, um, Jan Gustafsson. Check out, check out all the podcasts. Sagar Shah, of course. So uh, we were there and Ksenia was playing on the same team as me. And I was like, wow, this lady is impressive. And she's not even 18 yet. Uh, and the Kazakhstani team is very young and very strong. And they had chances to fight for gold. But uh, in the end, India prevailed and India took the first place. Kazakhstan took uh, the second um and uh, the U the us uh, took the third and in open section the us took the second but it was mostly luck good tie breaks uh, they could have easily been out of uh, out of contention for for the medals because of uh, because of the way uh, how strong those teams were i mean uh india china Uzbekistan. I think a sh separate shout out should go to Uzbekistan. Uh, their team has uh, been Im impressive, very impressive. Uh, has shown very interesting play in a good way. <laughs> Kremnik, uh, by the way, is their coach. So it's uh, probably it's an important factor because he's a legend, even though some of his actions uh, online uh, may have been questionable, but as a coach, as a chess player, he's, he's, he's a beast. So uh, congrats to Uzbekistan uh, on making the third uh, place. And they were the only one who drew India. India could have scored 100% uh, uh, team performance. Like, can you imagine that? If Arjun uh, managed to find a winning move uh, in his game uh, in the match against Uzbekistan, he had a win somewhere like a tactics, but uh, he had uh, low time and he didn't see it. So had he found that win, uh, India would have scored 22 out of 22 uh, <laughs> team points because teams get two, two points for a win in this event. So 11 rounds, 22 is the maximum. They didn't score 22, they scored 20, just 21, which is, I guess, the record in the recent history of the Olympics. So this is the level that they showed. Uh, the women's team scored um, a bit less, I think, 19, but still also very important, very impressive. So I want to say that uh, this is not a coincidence. This is not just luck, because in the previous Olympiad, in 2022 in Chennai, you might remember that India had two teams. Two teams. One was um, like the older team and the other was the junior team. Which, which was India 2. It was called India 2. And India 2 was the one who <laughs> almost managed to win gold. Um, Gukesh lost an important game to Nodirbek Abdusatorov from Uzbekistan. And that was the factor why they didn't score the gold medals. They scored the silver medals, I think, last year. Uh, not last year, in 2022. Already back then, they were younger. They were less experienced, uh, less high rated. But they already were beasts and... Uh, and uh, it was evident that the era of Indian uh, domination 
is uh, is arriving and now it is evident that it has arrived lots of talented indian uh, kids lots of uh, talented indian juniors many uh, we don't even know of yet so there are lots of uh, 10 12 years old year olds who who are yet to come and show us maybe they will be even stronger than gukesh arjuna or prague so um, india is a huge country where there's been lots of chess support of course vishanand the legend uh, has influenced many uh, people uh, the younger generations to go into chess there are many businesses who support chess players give big contracts as far as i know to what for example arjun to, told me on his on the podcast uh, you can check it out the link will be in the description so he's supported by one of such uh, companies there are others so um, it's looking good for india and uh, this level of domination reminds me of the level of domination of soviet union uh, teams which uh, also were dominating both in uh, open or men as they were called back then <laughs> sections and women's section so uh, there, there were the times when the Soviet team had, um, I think, uh, Tal, Botvinnik, Polugayevsky, who is not the world champion, but close to that level, uh, Karpov, or there were the times when Karpov and Kasparov were in the same team playing <laughs> the Olympiad. And this was obviously a, an OP team. So now India has the OP team in open, in women's section also there. In women's section, they were the rating favorites, I think. Uh, in open sections, uh, the US was the favorite, but by a small margin. And now if we look at the current ra uh, <laughs> ratings, now India would have been the rating favorite with the with the boost that the guys uh, uh, have farmed <laughs> during this Olympics. So it's looking very good for, for India. It's looking very bad for Dean Liren, who has not had a good Olympiad. He has not won a single classical game in like 25 plus games in a row. He has just lost or drawn 25 plus games in a row. How is he going to fight against Gukesh? I don't know. I like the guy. He's very humble, modest, uh, uh, a nice guy, and he has had impressive chess results. Um, he has played some amazing chess games, like in the late 2010s. But now he's he's just not feeling it, and uh, I feel sorry for the guy because he might get demolished very soon. We will see. Maybe maybe he shows up uh, better prepared, but maybe mentally better prepared, but. I, I frankly doubt it. I frankly doubt it that uh, anyone can compete with Gukesh, except maybe Arjun or Nadir Bek currently, um, if he's in form, because this is this is something out of this world. So thank you everyone who kept following uh, my content. Uh, I've uh, broken uh, the 5,000 uh, subscriber milestone and probably soon will break 6,000. There is still a lot to come. I'm uh, preparing lots of great podcasts for you and solo videos, so stay tuned. And by the way, I'm streaming on Twitch more these days. Check out my Twitch, the link will be in the description. Currently, we'll have... Um, I'll stop finishing this, I'll stop recording this video and uh, get to my bodas Gambit speedrun where I sacrifice the queen in every game. So check it out on Twitch. And see you in the next ones. Congrats to all the Indian fans. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy guys. Bye bye.